show. People can then dress it up. I like it live. I like it raw. I like I like to do uh, things the way they're meant to be. So, all right, now we good? We good now? Yeah, we should yeah. be good. Yes, yeah, you sound good now. You are definitely locked in. Um, Sony Michelle, Dolphins sign him. Your thoughts on the addition of Sony Michelle? You know, um, it's a little bit surprising, uh, even though. Uh, I thought the fact that Mike McDaniel got upset or bothered or fell out his chair when a back was taken in the fourth round, um, that should have been an indicator for me. But they clearly feel like they're missing a one more piece. And, and I think that that's the power back. That's the back that can gain those tough yardages. And, and adding Sony Michelle makes sense. I think he probably jumps to the forefront as the most seasoned and experienced back on the roster. Not exactly the best back that fits the scheme, but the best back that, that can get get those tough, hard-to-gain yards and red zone runs. And I, yeah, I think I, he's got a lot of dual purpose to him, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you there. The only thing I've told Dolphin fans is, unfortunately, as injury history and, you know, fumbling also and those kind of – he he hasn't been able to find consistency and – and let me tell you, I was a big Sony Michelle fan coming out of Georgia, but he just hasn't been able to find that consistency. That's the only thing I would tell Dolphin fans that I love his talent, but he's got to find a way to stay on the field. And hopefully, you know, Cam Wolf had a good point earlier in the show. You're not using him as a bell cow. So he's a part time yeah. back. So it'll be better that way for him. Everybody, and everybody's a part-time back. Everybody's a right. part-time back. Everybody's a their right. platoon system. Um, so you I, I don't think we'll ever see the day of dolphins using I haven't covered a coach who believed in a bell cow back. Not one. Dolph, not one dolphins coach. Even no, Adam once, Gates. Once, once there was our last guy with Ricky and, yeah. and Lamar. Even Smith. even Adam Gates when he guy. had Adam Gates hated Jay Ajayi. And he hated the fact he had to rely on Jay Ajayi. And he hated the fact that Jay Ajayi could demand the ball and have valid claims for the ball. That's why Jay Ajayi got traded. And Adam Gates hated Jay Ajayi. And, you know, they just don't believe in that one back. I, I haven't covered a coach. That's most of the NFL now. That's, that's the way it goes. Which, by the way, is understandable. I mean, look what's happened the last few years. All these backs that have gotten the big deals. They've it's it, they've all become bad deals pretty much, and that's the sad part. Uh, only Derrick Henry, which and he broke down. It's very few that you really want as bell cows nowadays. It's just it's yeah, not worth. It. I mean, one, I, I think tailback is probably one of the most disrespected positions in 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 all of professional sports. Um, I wouldn't wish a tail if I knew, and I say this all the time, if I know somebody who has a great athlete and a young great athlete and is looking for guidance and he plays tailback i'm telling that parent immediately he needs to stop playing tailback all, all he's doing is shortening his career shortening his life and limiting his money i get right. it playing running playing running back is fun it's great you get the ball you're the center of attention uh but there's no future in it bro Go play cornerback. Five yeah. guys, five cornerbacks on every single team. And all you really got to do is knock down the ball when it's thrown your way because you really don't have to tackle. Not, if you, and if you catch the ball, you're going to be making twice as much money as a tailback. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. It's just a, it's it's an undervalued uh, – it's a devalued position uh, in, in yeah. pro sports. It's the most devalued position. Because it's the most interchangeable position in all of pro sports. That's Linebacker also the problem. Not, not, yeah. You can find more people that can play running back than they can corner, defensive end, left tackle. It's just That's just the way it is, unfortunately, man. It's, and, it's a sad part, but reality. And everybody started playing running back. When they played sports teams, sports leagues, you, you name it, they played running back. Um, just because they were probably the best athlete on their team. When you're talking about a professional athlete, 
or a high level college athlete, all of them play running back. All of them play with the ball in their hands because they're the best athlete on their team. Yeah, uh, I I don't know if you saw the post by Nick from Perform, which is to his agent, uh, to his uh, trainer. Um, so, he yeah. said that those those two guys hit it off last year in workouts. So, I mean, not that that means anything whatsoever to the team because there's a new coach and all that. So everything changed. But for depth purposes, um, it, it fits what they're doing, right? Yeah, because I don't think it's necessary. Different. He is a little different than the other guys, is what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. I don't think it's necessary, but it fits and it makes sense. Now, if you if you're gonna do this and fill this hole, I'm dying to see what you're gonna do at center. And I, I would love to see you add another inside linebacker. I'd love to see you add another pass rusher. And you've had guys who all played that position except for center in for workouts who I would give you a thumbs up if you signed them. But, you know, I, we're, we're nitpicking the roster and yeah, they got money. They got money. No, but, that's, that, but, that, but what I'm saying is you're, they're I holding think out to waiting. make it cheaper. Right. I think he's waiting so for I'm saying Chris Greer. Uh, yeah, I think Chris Greer is waiting for his price, not their price. That's what yeah, I'm thinking, I, right? At this point, guys are just trying to find jobs. Now, some some veterans like the JC Trotters, Treaders, and I don't even think that this applies to him. One one thing I'll say about Treader, there's bad history with the NFLPA as president and teams wanting the NFLPA president in their locker room so that that's what he's got working against him which is why i, I never want to be the nflpa president and in fact people who are on the executive council told me they don't want to be the nflpa president no nope, nobody nobody wants the, the 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 union president in their camp um but let's move on from Treader. i i, I, no, I but, but it's not a matter of moving on it's a great point you make but he is a player that you could use, but again, oh, you is, he, is he I'm saying you sign him, him, you upgrade the center position. You make you should make the playoffs. You should be, <laughs> right now. You're. I, I looked at a power ranking. Not that I look at power rankings, but if I did look at a power ranking, it would be now, not during the season. They're the 17th, 18th best team in the NFL according to the power rankings. Okay. Okay. You, as you know, 16 make it to the playoffs. So, yes. So they're right there on the fringe, right there. They're 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 in the balance. And that's before injuries. That's well, they're, before. they're a nine they're a 9 and 10 win team the last two years. Yeah, if absolutely. You fix the you offense. Coach. If you do fix the offense, if that's if you guys you should, are you what should. you are. Yeah. And this quarterback takes the next step, you should be a playoff team. Why yeah. not? Do something that strengthens your chances and possibility. You sign Treader, I would say you go from the 17th best team to the 14th best team. Because now uh, you I, don't have a single weakness on your line. Again, what price, what length of contract, what's he looking for? That's those are the things that maybe he maybe they don't want. Maybe they only want him for a year. And maybe he wants a two or yeah. three year deal. Because he wants some guarantees, and they're like, "Yeah, Maybe. no, we're not." We, we don't know until he signs. All, all these cats that have come in lately have been one-year deals, right? Yeah, they right? don't they don't sign they don't sign multi-year deals to to grizzled veterans, especially right. at this point. No, he ain't, he ain't getting. I don't think Treader thinks he's getting a multi-year deal. Nobody, nobody signed him to a multi-year, especially deal. Like, with his knee, knee history, you're, right? I mean, you're thir you're thirty years old. They don't they don't do that anymore. Um. I would love to know what his medical history is. Maybe I, I can ask. I, I can actually ask somebody in Cleveland and see what what the situation is. Um, now that I think about it. Uh, so let me ask you this: Last year, you were very concerned about the offensive line. You said it would be terrible, and it was. You were very concerned about the before camp history. started. Remember that. Remember it was before I know that, camp. I know started. that. I know. I, I have a memory. You don't, but I have a memory. Um. A sick What's man is called? taking shots at me right now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you also I have said a voice that you don't. You also said you weren't uh, you weren't uh, very um, comfortable with the receiver situation because there was a shit ton of injury history in it. 
Okay. So let me ask you something. How concerned are you with the injury history of the running backs, including Sony Michelle, that you just added to go along with the other guys that also have injury history? How concerned should we be uh, about that? I don't know about Chase Edmonds' injury history. I don't think he has one. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a big injury history, no. It's most My, than this kid now. Uh, Mostert is a one-year ACL. That's, you know. No, he had another with... injury before that, too, I think. I think he also had another injury before that, too. Um, got to look it up. But yeah. Gaskins has been a knee in COVID. Uh, I mean, you got five. You'll figure it out. Two matter. Okay. I, mm, you got five. I just say because, because Mostert and Michelle – are the two that have some injury history. That's why. If, I mean, if are, are you concerned. counting on Michelle being the starter? Like, I, I, one. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm counting on all of them contributing. I don't really think there's a starter. I think it's one yeah, of those things yeah. that we're going to interchange. Uh, hell, Everybody I think gets... Alex Ingold will, will, will take some of the short yardage stuff at times that you would think might go to other guys. So, you know, who knows? If everybody gets 15 touches a game, Top three guy gets 15 touches a game. Uh, who cares? I don't care. I don't care. Like, uh, I think it's more the line than it is the back. I the scheme is all the line. The scheme makes backs sure. if they do it sure. right. So sure. I'm not worried about you. Yeah, you can give me Jared Dokes. I don't care. Like I, I believe that the scheme makes backs. So I'm not really worried about the injury history or. Like Sony Michelle, like all right, go, cool. Throw him on the pile. I thought it was a little expensive, a little pricey, but eh, who knows what's guaranteed? And they can walk into camp and and probably see what they got and just toss him to the side because I right, promise yeah. you, probably less than five hundred thousand dollars of his contract is guaranteed. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I, I, what I do find interesting is that the money you're paying him puts him immediately ahead of 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 Gaskin and. The one thing I thought that this coaching staff would do is they would, especially with Eric Studsville, still the running back coaches, they will walk into this offense and into these practices with a blank slate and let these guys compete and figure out where they all stack up. And if that happened, I did like Gaskin's chances because because if you remember, Gaskin's beat out, um, I believe it's Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake. Gaskins beat out um, Jova, uh, Jordan Jordan Howard. Gaskins beat out Matt Breida, and I, I, you know, I'm not a huge fan, but I know the kid is competitive. Like the kid right. is top right. ten in, in rushing history in NFC, NCAA. Like by so, the way, somebody, who was it last year that ended up getting getting Jordan and actually using him and making him productive? Uh, Eagles, Eagles, the Eagles. Right, it was yeah. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. Bro, yeah. Interesting. Jo uh, that's an interesting case study because Jordan, when I saw him, I saw him train at Bomberitos before the season. I was like, yeah, this guy's done. And then he came here, was trash. Went to play for the Eagles, was decent. Signed, yeah, was a, decent. Second year, yeah. signed a second year and had a decent year. So I'm yeah. like, I don't know nothing. So I mean, he he was solid for for Washington. The thing about him is he's limited because he can't. It's not a. Did he play for Washington so. last year? Um, no. Was it what did I say? What well, I mean, Chicago. He was decent for Chicago when he yeah 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 the, yeah. He, out he, of he, where he, was it, Nebraska or wherever the hell he came from? He was right? decent with the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I, I was crazy how they used him. By the way, you mentioned it. How bad is how bad does Dokes feel right now? Like he's got to be going like, dude, I'm not getting any. You, you got cut and you made the practice squad last year. If you were seventh round pick, doing what you're supposed to do, know your playbook, all you know, back backwards and forwards, you wouldn't have got cut. And it, I don't, I don't, I don't stress about that, dude. You're seventh round pick. I don't, I don't. No, no, I, don't. I, I know, but the poor kid is just like, oh yeah, he's got no shot now, dude. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, no, look at look at look at Mostert's career path, like. He was on like five practice squads before his career took, including my yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I swear yeah. to God, when he was starting for the 49ers in the Super Bowl, I didn't remember him here. Like, I still didn't remember him here. Like, he was here for a cup of coffee. And, no, he wasn't even here for – he was here longer than that. 
Don't remember at all. Zero. Zero recollection. No knowledge of it. Yeah. And no, no. That, like, that's that's one of those cool. positions that, yeah, you can bounce around and then eventually find your way. You know what I'm saying? You know but what? Just, I they should have signed. kind of feel bad for the kid that, again, he came in with a different coaching staff. I don't know whose pick that was or whatever. I don't feel bad for Obviously, don't this, bad coach, for this coach has a different point of view of what he wants to use. And Jared I don't Dokes feel bad for mind. anybody because your opportunity is what you will create. Look at Miles Gaskin, seventh round pick. Stole the starting spot. Yeah. From yeah. a pro yeah. bowler, a guy you traded for, and a, a Kenyan drink. Stole it. But he was given an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? It's just nah, this he kid hasn't it. even gotten to that point yet, you know? Nah, he wasn't even given an opportunity. Miles Gaskin just took the job. Just took it. Jared, just Jared Dokes may end up in the XFL or the, you know, one of those leagues, USFL or whatever, to try to reprove himself when it's all said and done. Unless he ends up in the practice squad again. What do you they, think? They, oh, who cares? I, I don't. <laughs> like, I, I don't. Uh, undrafted rookies, seventh round picks, like like uh, Larnell Coleman, like that guy was horrible in camp. Yeah, he was bad. Yeah, he was bad. A and the fact that they IR'd him to keep him on the fifty three, like bro, this is this ain't this ain't charity work. Like he should have been cut and put on the practice squad if that. Like these guys are, are on the roster, grace and mercy. Like just because you're drafted, then you should not get be guaranteed a spot. Go out there and earn it. Do do what it takes to prove that you belong on the roster. That's all. That's all I care about. Because there are undrafted guys like Nick Needham that bust their, you know what, to keep that check coming every Tuesday. Oh, uh, you look at okay. So outside of those moves, you're not hearing anything else for the Dolphins. It looks like they're pretty close to done now, right? They'll always add right before camp. They'll, they'll always add. They've never not added right before camp. They'll they'll add linebacker. They'll add a... a, a what number know, are they uh, at right now, right? Because isn't it like 90 that you got to have? It's it's hard to tell what the official number is because they have not announced what undrafted players have signed. And until they announce it, I look at it as some of these guys are getting tryouts. They're not signed. So, I, you know, agents lie all the time. So they'll say a guy's signed and he's really a tryout guy. The, the, the only five have been reported to league, and those are the five that I count. So I can't tell you exactly what number they're on right now. Any man crush on any of the undrafted uh, uh, free agents? If you put a gun to my head, I couldn't name you one. Okay. All right. that, the, I, I, you know, my no, sometimes, approach, sometimes you run into somebody in the league that tells you about no, one of the guys. and then my, all of a sudden, my approach has always been with undrafted guys. When they start to work their way up the depth chart or they start to make plays in practice, I'll pay attention. I'll learn their name. Right. I got like you. Nick Needham. I learned Nick Needham's name two weeks in the camp. Press Williams, I learned his name one week in the camp. Like right. yeah. it, it don't it, it like the rest of the 15, like they don't matter. The AJ Francis is of the world, the the those guys, they they'll raise their hand and say, Hey, I'm here. Like Pay attention to me. You better learn my name. They they do that, and and it's By the very. Way, now, you brought up something very interesting because it looks like they're pretty loaded at wide receiver. Um, will Preston Williams have to make an impact or an impression early to his new coach in order to gain any real playing time and set himself up? Because you know they drafted a Zukama, so I, I'm I'm just wondering. You know, obviously, McDaniel must love something about him. And you start to look at all the receivers. Where does Preston Williams fit? Does he fit? Can he fit? You know, I've kind of lost, you know, confidence in that oh, kid already yeah. as it is. So you tell me, what's the uphill climb for Preston Williams this season? Learn the playbook. Same thing. I put him in Lim Bowden Jr. category. You better learn the playbook. You better learn it fast. Because this is a new offense. Everybody's on equal footing. Preston Williams, you can't be three years in, even though the offense changed on you every single year. You can't be three years in and saying, hey, I don't know the playbook when Isaiah Ford knows it. Like, right. so that 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 that's his that's his issue. Talent is there, undeniable oh, yeah. that the talent is there. 
um, the, 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 the understanding of the offense, the ability to read defense, the ability to execute and do your job and do your assignment. That's his biggest challenge. Same thing with Lynn Bowden Jr. Two guys, phenomenal talents. Got to get it up here. And well, I, I, I love Lynn Bowden's, like, um, uh, what's it called? His skill set for this offense. Oh, with Preston, absolutely. you know, it's just, I don't know if Preston can screw you always need, You always need a big, dude, you always need a big physical slant receiver. I, I hate how Dolphin fans. I, I know, but Ezukama might be that guy because that's why they Preston, drafted Preston him. Preston Williams outperformed the entire 2019 draft class. Him and Nick Needham. They outperformed everybody in that draft class. How quickly we forget. At, like, the talent is there. No, there's no doubt oh, the talent is there. Nobody's denying that, Omar. Nobody that has so, watched so Preston. I, I, we know I, he's good. I hate, I hate giving up on a guy. Yeah, we know his issues. We know his issues. I just hate giving up on a guy because they haven't, they're, you know, they're, you know what's haven't dropped in the last four years. Preston Williams, if anything, this is my favorite period of an or, NFL or, or lack of is maturity, it, by the way. I, I think it's more this. He's okay. he's my he's my he's in my favorite period of an NFL career. It's the period where you're hanging on to an NFL job and a check like this. It's like it's 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 just barely in your grasp. Does you're he just realize? It? On. Huh? He Does got he realize? To. He got two. I hope they so. didn't pick up your. You didn't pick up your restricted tender. Then, not only did they not pick up your restricted tender, nobody else signed you, and they signed you a relatively a minimum deal. Right. Hey, after you wanted to go explore, what are your other options? To, and get a fresh start somewhere else because you did want to do that, and then you didn't have the opportunity, so you came right. back here. You know, tail between legs, and said, "Okay, if I want to continue to play in the NFL, this is it. I love this is it. I love this is it." I hope he's ready to respond to this is it. Oh That's my god, thing. I love this is it. I've seen is so he, many. Is he players. mature enough to understand that? And go out there and ball out. That's when you. That's when you realize those checks are guaranteed. Mm hmm. That what this is it? That's my favorite part part of of an NFL career. Um, one of my favorite stories, and I'll never tell the player's name. Uh, he was on the final year of his rookie deal. His a, a financial advisor had stolen all his money. Family, family needs had taken all his money. He was living paycheck to paycheck. Dad broke in the offseason. Dad broke. And he was in a this is it year. Lo and behold, had a phenomenal year. Not gonna say what happened from there, but he had a he had a pretty impressive career from that point. But he needed that this is it moment, that this is it situation to light that fire, to get that grind going. And he became one of my favorite players because he was like, I'm hungry. Like this is it. This is all I. This is this is all I've ever wanted to do, and I took it for granted previously. But I'm not gonna take it for granted right uh, not right now because I'm about to be out of here. And he balled. Who was that? Can't tell you the name. Not my business to tell you. Okay. Well, you, you have to figure it out. Not not that hard. But okay. the the financial advisor part is what. That's like inside information. But he was dead broke, not a penny to his name. Oh, I, I, I just, I I just hope that I, I just hope Preston is mature enough to figure that out because that's where I think he's kind of hurt himself. That I don't think he's oh, mature enough. Oh, he's definitely enough. it. Um, you know what's, I would, what's funny is he's 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 like I can't say fake deep, but there's a depth to him. That you don't get or hear about in in football context. Like if you, do, I know you you you're, you're bothered by the Doge coin and all. And I, I watched the. Bitcoin. No, I laugh at I laugh I laugh at that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched the okay. Bitcoin like an hour tutorial on Bitcoin because you know I'm still not comfortable with it. Um, 
and, Lots and, of and yeah, they laugh, they laugh at Dogecoin too. So I was like, yeah, Big O was right. Yeah, it's like Bitcoin is, I mean, Dogecoin is like a scam. Did you know there are like 19,000 different like Bitcoin cr cryptocurrencies? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But there's, that doesn't mean they're all good. Most of them are bad. That's why you got to be careful on what you're going to yeah. invest in because certain companies are just, and there's meme coins, which they have no basis and they have no technology, which is the problem with Dogecoin that has no technology and nothing to build on. So that's the problem with it. It's kind of understand. You have to understand the whole damn thing. I don't know if he does. See, you, you hate to see the Sylvester Grays of the world disappear off the map. Yeah, that's a, a long time ago. But I know it's Jonas Gray, not Sylvester. Sylvester was a player uh, in the expansion years of the Heat, who um, was oh. came out of Memphis, was God gifted. Like a body of Adonis, athleticism was just through the roof, but he couldn't harness it. He couldn't figure it out. You know, Harold Miner, you know, you, you run into these guys over the years that you know they can play the game at the highest level because Some the good Lord blessed them. From a standpoint, I think I read somewhere Harold Miner after his career was over, he was just like, yeah, I didn't I didn't work hard enough. I didn't take right, it seriously. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I there, lived there, off, I lived off my time. Right. Jamarcus Russell, you know, there, there's something that stops these guys, whether it's maturity, lack of professionalism, commitment, whatever it is. Same dude. reason I can't take my fat ass to the gym. It, 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 so, sometimes you and me sometimes both. Sometimes you just, you just don't have, you just don't have that motivation, big O. You got yeah. to take it yeah. away from me. Yeah. And that's the thing that you see with Preston that you know he can be that guy. He, I, I can just, tell you. I Can't haven't seen figure it out, bro. Like I haven't it seen on. a dominant receiver like him since Brandon Marshall, practice wise. Now, that don't mean he can put it all together. Because remember, I saw him two years yeah. just just absolutely dominate practice yeah. against elite players. Like he made me think Byron Jones was the biggest bust the Dolphins have. I Byron Jones was in um Jabril Wilson territory, Jay yeah. Grove territory, the way Preston was housing him all all training camp. Cecil Collins. You know, you see these guys over the years, and you know that they were gifted, and they just, for whatever reason, they screw it up. You know what I mean? And that's where I, I am with Preston. It's like, kid, figure it out, bro. You can make a lot of money. You can yeah. control your destiny like nothing else he if can. you just put your mind to it, bro. That's all. That's all. You know, and we see these kind of guys in every sport. Doesn't matter Absolutely. what it is. I've seen the West Chamberlains and the Brian Taylors and the, you know, all. I, I've seen them in all sports, and I can name them. And not, it's yeah, one of those yeah. Not, uh, not ability. It's, it's always... That's that's part of the reason why, you know, if somebody asks me what's the number one trait that you look for in a player, generally, it's not athletic ability. Um, it's not the body, it's the intelligence. Because in my fifteen and the years commitment, of the and the commitment, the professionalism has to come with that too. Uh that's, I'm just saying the trait that I'm looking for, because the universal thread to every player that I've seen come here and have a tremendous amount of success, significant success, outperform the athletic ability, outperform their draft status, outperform whatever they were, um, exceed, maximize, maximize the talent that they had. You know what the common thread is? Intelligence. Intelligence. The Brian Hartlines of the world. Brian was a decent athlete. Um, he was a competent receiver, but you know what made him a multi-year starter and two-year, thousand-year, thousand-yard receiver for the Miami Dolphins is this. Yeah, and sure. that's why he's at Ohio State pumping out the best wide receivers in the nation. 
And, he, and and by the way, he was a tough little some bitch too. On top of all of that, I give Brian a little I credit. He was tough. Uh, nah, tough nah, yeah, yeah. Nah. When you're when you're when you're not that gifted, you got to be tough to survive that. Nah. To that point. Jarvis so give, was give, a tough. Give, Jarvis was a tough son. Of no, boy. no, but that's his play. I'm talking about the toughness of overcoming the fact that you're not as gifted. So when you're not as gifted, Brian, you, if, if you talk to Brian, he'll tell you he's as gifted as anybody else on this at team. He'll tell you That's I ran fine. track and I'm this fast and blah blah blah, and he's he's very confident. So I don't think he'll take a backseat to anybody athletically. He he won't. He just won't. I I, the, I miss he, having conversations. He's the with number him. one recruiter. He's the number one recruiter in the country. I I, you know I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Um, I know he's the number one wide receiver coach in the country. He apparently <laughs> apparently he is the he is like. The ultimate in recruiting. Like yeah, I, I said this. Ass. I said this probably two coaches ago. The fact that Dolphins have not done whatever it takes to get him on their coaching staff, and I don't have any issue with Wes Welker. Um, but when you but maybe can pump out, but maybe he's a college guy. Maybe he doesn't want to coach in the. Program. Yeah, you're right. But you know what? I, I'm sorry. Money talks. I know, but he seems to be recruiting like the best receivers to Ohio State. Cool. Like Money he's getting talks. the best receiver. I know, but cool. maybe he's getting Money Ohio talks. State, Ohio State pays. Right, right. Cool. Money talks. And Boss Ross like to make that paper dance. So No, I get it. I get it. But I, 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 listen, I think Brian Hartline in 10 years is going to be a phenomenal head coach somewhere. I, I really do. I, I I can always tell you those guys in the locker room. And and the funny thing is. When he was in the locker room, and I talked to him all the time because I love, I would. He's one of those guys that I would when I didn't understand, and this is where people don't understand one the value of going into the locker room, and two the value of relationships that you build with players. There are two players, one on offense and one on defense. Usually, I always find two, where if something happened and it didn't make sense to me on offense or defense, I would go to them and ask them what happened or why did this not work or what what broke down here what was the byproduct and they t they tell me they give me a tutorial in education brian hartline was phenomenal at explaining things in their simplest form so that i can understand it so that i can share it with the masses in terms of what happened that led to whatever was going on for instance i'll give you a perfect example um the uh the the mike gesicki remember the buffalo game where mike gesicki's like there's all kinds he's, he's struggling to get a waddle didn't know his assignments and mike gesicki's trying to be policemen and police everybody oh yeah, yeah 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 bright man brian hartline would have broke that whole situation down for me and explained exactly everything that happened in detail and Gesicki did well. Gesicki did did his job without throwing anybody under the bus. And, and but he meant well. He meant well in that position. He was trying to help his he team. Meant well. Oh no no no! I don't blame you know? Mike Gesicki for anything Definitely because not. Mike Gesicki was Definitely trying not. to get people. Everybody else was screwing up. Mike was trying to get everybody right. right. Mike knew where everybody was supposed to be. Exactly. Yes. yes. And, and that's why I bring up Mike because Hardline would be that guy, and then Hartline would be the one explaining to me why things happen the way they happen. He'd go into the week and tell you what happened during the week that messed up this and that day practice and this. And I, I and I love that. I appreciate that so much. I hope, uh, I hope, I think he, I hope your sicky fits like a glove to this offense. Cause he is one of those guys that I've grown to really like a lot. And, uh, uh, I I hope he's here forever, bro. I hope he gets to retire. As you know how I feel about that. I like him. I know. I know you're not as big a fan, but I uh, I like Asiki, man. I think he can sell out. All right. Oh, uh, what are you working on the Sun Sentinel so folks can check you out, my friend? Well, we're just getting ready for rookie mini camp here. Um, we got the schedule release coming out. Um, Dolphin fans are, I don't know, trying to figure out what their road trip is. I know it's not going to be Detroit. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, I, I'm gonna look at the schedule, tell everybody what the best road game is because Dolphin fans they 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 need that guidance, tell you what the best city is.
Do you, do you know any of the leaks of, of the schedule? Because people keep asking me about Buffalo in week one, but I don't even know if it's true or not. Whatever, bro. Week one, week 10. 50% of those leaks are accurate, to be honest with you. 50% okay. of those. I don't know them. I don't pay attention to them because I I don't care. Like, But 50% of those leaks are accurate. They, they come from somewhere uh, and, you know, uh, yeah. 50% of the leaks are accurate. I, I get it for some fans because they travel, so they may want to, you know. So I, I get that part. You know? I travel. Most, most fans, I understand the ones that want to travel and go to a game. What's that? I, I travel. I, all it does is it, it knocks off probably 50 bucks off your, your hotel stay. Okay. A night. Like, okay. Like. Hey, 50 bucks is, you know, a couple drinks. So there you go. A couple of extra drinks on the road. Nothing 50 wrong bucks that. equates to two drinks in South Beach. Right. Um, um, Miami, not South Beach. Five in Buffalo. So all there right. you go. You got me. All right. There you go. Yes. You're wasted already in Buffalo, right? All right. You, know? you, got, you got me. Like when you get on that when you get on that 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 wheel in in Las Vegas. No, it's it's four in Buffalo. Four in Buffalo. You forget your tips. Have you have you seen that carousel that they the 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 thing they have in Buffalo? I mean in Vegas, the the big wheel. Oh yeah, I thought you said they had one in Buffalo. I was gonna make a big no no not Buffalo. Too. I mean Vegas, but they have bars inside of those things. So yeah. you have like. You you like pay a flat fee and you can drink as much as you want during the thirty minutes. So people are drinking four, five, six drinks during that whole thing, going all the way around in a half hour, forty five minutes. Because I think it takes a half hour, forty five minutes to go all the way around. I, I've been so meaning got, to get on the one in Miami. There is there is one here downtown. Yes. I've been I've been yes. meaning to go. That might be a good thing to do with my wife. For sure, for sure, they, dude. I, good move. Yeah, yes. good move. Make buddy. that happen. Make some love on the carousel. There you go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. There you yeah. go. Film it and everything and make some money. There. there I don't you know go. if you I'm going to film it now. Let's, 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 yeah, let's you guys can go the, the, the road of Kim K, and then both of you become, you know, reality stars. That's all. There you go. Well, did you did you see Ray J finally put out that that, that it was it was uh you know uh basically her mom, right. she, uh, you she, know, she, she set it all. the 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 mother set it all up. In other set words, set it all up. She knew that they had hey. the, the tape, and she wanted. She's the one that's you know wanted to put out the tape, and and I, I'm know, sorry, the but career. if 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 putting out a sex tape of my daughter creates four billionaires, I don't know, bro. I don't know. Four just, billionaires. Biggest yeah, empire. I I, I I get that, but it's just the I mean, way you I, see. My problem with all of that is I have no respect for them as it is. So it's just you know, but hey, whatever. Man. You got your money. You don't care. So live your life. Whatever. Four billion. Don't have all your plastic surgeries and their kids. Uh, listen, do you not think that Kim and Kanye's kids are gonna be and 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 Chloe's kids are gonna be the aren't gonna be the next? Yeah, but I, I don't put Kanye. Don't look. Kanye is crazy. Okay, but Kanye made his money legit. Okay. Okay. Not skankiness. Okay. He didn't have to go sell hey, his body. Made money legit. He make his money. You know. So I don't put Kanye in anywhere near those idiots. You know what he I mean? I'm not a Kanye too. fan. But dude, I give him credit. He makes his money his own way, the the the, the legal way, the right way. It's just I don't know. The sex tape is just. I mean, that was just the beginning. Hold on now. She's made. She's made. That was only worth like a couple million. She's made a billion. No, I I, I get it. I get it. But it, again, it's I I I wouldn't feel good. And I'm sorry. I know I'm going to insult a bunch of people now. Here we go. Uh, but you know watching that show or whatever if your wife or your kids are following those leads you know you might have failed somewhere in your home that's all i gotta say anyway i'm sorry dude you know have some scruples in life my, my wife doesn't follow watch him, him. So. Uh, follow him on twitter at omar kelly and watch him uh, follow and subscribe at the South Florida Sun Sentinel and get his work there and catch him twice a week here before my voice goes out. Oh, 
Thank you for adjusting, my brother. Appreciate it. I needed it. Yeah, before before we go, we we had uh, yeah. Justin Gatling on uh, I Am Athlete. Um, a oh. really interesting conversation from former track Olympians, sus drug suspensions, the rival to Usain Bolt. Um, interesting conversation. I just didn't know all the track guys, track guys and girls have to go through. They're not unionized and basically there's no money in track oh it's terrible bro it's yes so terrible. i didn't know how dude. terrible it was yeah dude yeah it's very few that end up in the you know that category of flojo and you know rest in peace and even, you know even those those, those elite ones that end up with the like the top sponsorships and stuff like that carl lewis and those kind of cats yeah there are a few that end up making you know michael johnson those kind of cats, they end up making a lot of money. And to Michael's credit, he has become a great trainer too now. Uh, you know, I haven't doing heard his own anybody thing. he's trained lately, which is weird. Isn't it Michael know. Johnson performance? Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's called. Yeah, I don't know who the guys that go I, I there. He hasn't trained guys lately because I haven't heard much about him. So I, 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 I don't I'll know. Check. I don't know if he's still doing it or or what. Yeah, but I'll what I'm saying it. is, though, he was one of those few track stars that got you know, the break of the, of the sponsorships. But if you don't get the break of the sponsorships, dude, yeah, it's rough. It's rough sledding for them. It's tough. Yeah. We don't really treat our U S athletes the way we should. In a way we should be, um, it, it should be a job that we should employ them because they have to make a career commitment to it in order to win in the Olympics and everything else. But it's almost like, you know, we let them do it on their own, and which, by the way, makes it even more amazing that we dominate the way we do, considering everybody else has a bigger commitment to their athletes than we do. It's crazy. Doesn't make any sense. It's unfair. Yeah. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check that Appreciate one out. That. You yeah, can find it definitely. on YouTube. Always uh, follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly and catch his work there at the Sun Sentinel. Oh, thank you. Appreciate All you. Right. Appreciate you, man. That's our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.